Hey Space Watchers and welcome here from Geneva. I'm here at the Space Sustainability Forum, the second edition, and I have now the great honor to speak with Arti Holameni, the director of the UNOSA, the United Nations Office of Outer Space Affairs. So, Arti, how are you doing today? Very well, thank you. A little jet lagged after IAC, but... <laughs> like many of the participants, what I could find out here. So, we just listened to the ITU's Secretary General, Doreen Bogdan Martin, um, and she talked about more and more UN bodies are talking space. What I thought is a great thing. So, how do you, as UN OSA, respond to that? And how do you fulfill their interest in space? Um, yeah, I think we have reached a point where space is not no longer invisible and unknown. Uh, it is known, perhaps for not the right reasons, but anyway, we have to ride on the wave of the visibility that space is receiving in order to really pass the message to um, all member states and decision makers and policy makers that tools are there and available uh, based on millions of dollars of investments that have already been made um, that you can access to achieve national policy objectives. Mm -hmm. I think this is what we really have to get across. The fact that so many organizations are working uh, on space is only contributing to this momentum and this awareness. So that in itself is a good thing. We are the office with the mandate to promote the peaceful uses of outer space and to really um, be the gateway between uh, the investments that have gone into space technology, data and services and the needs of countries, small island developing states, least developing countries who don't have access, who are not spacefaring, um, but to really make sure that space benefits everybody. The theme of this conference is uh, space sustainability. And I would say that is in the heart of what UNOSA is doing. So LTS, many of the other initiatives. Why Geneva? I mean, we all love Geneva. It's a beautiful place here, but why Geneva and not Vienna? Plenty of things happening in Vienna. Uh, later this year, we have a, co um, a conference on uh, the commercial lunar landscape. Uh, earlier this year we had the Space Sustainability Days um, and now we have an expert group on space situational awareness. Uh, meanwhile, COPUS is also discussing legal aspects of space resources activities, yeah. so mining the moon, um, nuclear power sources. Many, many things are happening in Vienna. They don't happen in Geneva. It's very important that we do come to Geneva and that we inform the, con the constituents of the international organizations here, be it the ITU, be it the Office of Disarmament Affairs or even Uni UNIDIR, um, that we inform them what is happening in Vienna and what UNUSA and COPUS are doing. Um, so the need to break down silos uh, between work is important. Yeah. Here in Geneva, um, the uh, member states are responsible for space security um, and they are very much in their bubble of security where everything is you know difficult and deadlocked um, and they don't know that there's also um, a positive note to uh, space sustainability and that's thanks to Vienna where we deal with sustainability and safety Absolutely. without the security factor mm -hmm. so while here um, these, ca these narratives are always seen through a political lens. In Vienna, we have a greater opportunity to see them through an operational lens and from the operational perspective. And so it's, it's important that we inform the Geneva diplomatic community. And I think it's a great development um, that all the parties are talking now with each other. And I think you paved the way um, earlier this year at, at UN Copius at one of the side events, inviting all of the Geneva entities also to, to you and to, to discuss how to cooperate. And I think that's a, that's a great development. Congratulations Thank on you. that. Give us an update on the current initiatives that you're running and I know that they are very close to you and you're, you're pushing them forward. So where do we stand on those of the gateway or others? Um, so there is so much happening. We need to make sure that COPUS maintains momentum 
they the committee has come a long way i think in the last uh, year and a half um in in really driving forward where it matters so lunar coordination now space traffic coordination uh, and even space resources discussions are going very very well so we need to maintain that momentum and from my perspective that means doing a bit more capacity building with the delegates who come to vienna yeah. to make sure that they really understand the topics that they have to deal with um, that's one aspect and then of course we have the um, the mandate that we have of being custodians of space for the sustainable development goals mm -hmm. and there I mean the work is so important we we're doing great work but we need to scale it um, and that means being able to facilitate access to higher resolution imagery for the countries who need it the most, being mm -hmm. able to put digital twins in the hands of more and more uh, disaster management authorities and uh, um, uh, uh, yeah, the, the government entities that need it the most. Didn't you just mention at, the, at your panel that 55 countries are waiting for your support to help them, to bring them to the next level? I had an interesting conversation on Space Cafe uh, Radio with Peter Martinez and we talked about these Secure World Foundation's handbook for UN Copius uh, members and that was interesting. I said, why that? But he gave me this background. But seeing hearing your your words uh, on 55 countries that's quite a number 65 not 55 oh, sorry yeah 65 countries are waiting for space law technical advisory missions wow. uh, space law or space policy um, it's right now we're at a time where we need to enforce 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 that means ratify the treaties that mm -hmm. exist uh, implement uh, um, the long-term sustainability guidelines the space debris mitigation guidelines bring all of these into the national level so that they can be for enforceable we hear too much that we need binding rules the UN doesn't have teeth this is not mm -hmm. enforceable yeah that's because member states haven't moved to implementation so that is the important next step I would like to stay on your panel or that you participated a moment ago and you shared an interesting message about meeting people that are in need of space services at the IEC and listen to that carefully maybe you want to share that with our audience as well so and why was that such an touching moment um, you know when you work in the UN you you hear so many buzzwords and uh, you know access for all, you know, education for all, healthcare for all, um, or, or climate change this, and mm -hmm. you hear about all of these things, and of course it becomes part of you because it's all about the sustainable development goals. But we talk about it from um, an intellectual perspective, from a political perspective, from a financing perspective, but we don't feel it. Mm -hmm. And by going to the IAC, which was this year in Sydney, by being in the Indo-Pacific region and actually convening the heads of national disaster management authorities, which we did at a UNUSA workshop there, a UNUSA IAF workshop, um, we heard directly from them. They don't travel to Vienna and Geneva yeah. uh, to talk about uh, these things. We went to them and we heard it firsthand and we, 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 we feel the impact uh, and realize by being in the region that what they're actually going through. Um, if I may, earlier this year I was at the um, UN uh, Global Financing for Development Conference in Sevilla. Um, it was 46 degrees um, and we went there, I mean the world flew in, heads of state flew in, um, everybody suffered in the heat, and but they flew out. And while they were there, they were in air-conditioned rooms. There are people who live yeah. in these conditions. The work that we do impacts people that live facing the realities that we talk about. Yeah. And I think the way to move the needle on these things is to have the decision makers really experience Uh, and get closer to the user experience so that they put that at the center of their equation and not politics. Thank you very much for sharing that, um, that, that momentum. And please keep on doing this very inspirational and obviously impactful work. So it's not just for the bubble, it is also affecting people in, the, in a good way. Artie, thank you very much for your time. And with that, Space Watch out from Geneva. <laughs>